Good morning. Good morning, Miss Khan. Sorry, Miss Birch. Birch. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna have Miss Khan next period. That's why. Hey, hey, listen. I've been called yeah. a lot worse, so thank you for <laughs> confusing me with Miss Khan. I appreciate that. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Birch. Hey, no worries. No worries. We have harder things to worry about, right? Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. So don't even worry at all. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm just trying to eat breakfast before class starts. They're, good idea. Good idea. I like that. Yeah. Good morning. You always look like you're like in this beautiful, uh, like wonderland. Are you in your yard? Are you in a yard or in a forest or fairyland or something? I'm in my patio. Or I nice. guess this could be a patio. I know, it looks so pretty. <laughs> My parents, they have an avocado tree, roses, um, the little Jamaican flower that blooms yeah. really nicely in the summer, uh, a lemon tree in there, yeah, and then there's turtles down there. Oh, somewhere. you're kidding. No, we Tur have like four turtles. Uh, water turtles or turtles that are that are on land? Water turtles. Really? How cool. That's mm -hmm. cool. Let me see if I can show you. I don't know anyone else on here anyways. Yeah, I used to have a turtle growing up. Oh my gosh, there they are. Yeah. Oh, how cute. I think we have some like herb somewhere in there. I think we uh -huh. have like rosemary. We have oh, so nice. many things. So, so many things. It is a fairy land. <laughs> yeah. And then we have the dogs out here too, but they don't make any noise un unless they hear someone. Okay. All right. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Were you guys all able to take the attendance? Did it open up on time? Were you guys able to do the attendance? Hello. Yeah. Go ahead, Hannah. I'm listening. Yeah, we, yeah, we could. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. It opened up at. Did it open up at twenty after? Uh, nine twenty. Did it open up at nine twenty? Yeah. Okay, good. That's good. All right. Okay, I am going to start on time today, so we have one minute. And um, I, I will get started, so. Do you guys have any questions about anything while I'm standing here? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, so I got this calculator yesterday. It's the TI-83 Plus from the school, and it's not turning on. Do you know if I need a charger or anything? Okay, but no, you want triple A batteries. Yeah, you might need batteries because the yeah the batteries go dead um, really easily, so I mean okay. quickly. No. So uh, yeah, you might the back you can just take the back off. Um, if you look at my calculator here, you just take see the batteries in there. Yeah. So just, the school didn't give us any batteries. Okay. I know you know why because the batteries are expensive. So. Yeah. 
So Monday, I had yeah. to go buy some this morning. Yeah, great, right? Yeah. We should charge the district for all these things. All right, good morning. I'm gonna get started. I, I am gonna start on time. Um, I hope you guys were able to uh, mark yourself present for the attendance in Google Classroom. Uh, there have been people previous to you that have been turning things in late and it's driving me crazy. And, and I sent out a remind message last night about that. So please make sure you mark yourself present before the end of class. Um, because, um, yeah, I just, I just want to take the attendance all at once. You know, I don't want to have to go to any other site, um, because you're turning in things late. I uh, might as well get in the habit now because I'm not going to take late assignments either. So. Um, yeah, you got, you got to make sure you turn everything in late and pay attention to the deadlines. All right. If I'm not seeing your face right now, if I'm not seeing the audio, I need to see your face, please, to know that you're here. Um, one more, uh, well, a couple more announcements. Number two, uh, remember the bus schedule or not the bus schedule, but the, uh, the schedule that I gave for picking up a calculator, um, uh, make sure you pick up a calculator. And I was just talking to Alessandra about um, batteries. You might need batteries. Um, so uh, you're going to need this calculator. And if you don't have it, you're going to be frustrated um, when I start using it. Um, you are required to have the calculator with you at all class meetings. Because what will happen is I'll be doing something on the calculator and I'm going to have you do it. Because um, this class is your class, not mine. I know how to operate the calculator. I need to make sure you know how to. So when I ask for answers off the calculator, you need to be able to do the calculation um, in real time. The last thing I wanna say is, I appreciate you all um, trying to be ahead of the game on things that I put. Anything that I have not put in. Um, what's happening now is I have 100 people on different pages and it's, um, it's very difficult for me to, to be teaching right now. Um, so I need to get everybody on the same page. So I am going to cover the syllabus. I am going to cover um, how I want the assignments done. I am going to cover how I want the notebook. And um, I'm also going to tell you when I have the first assignment. So um, don't try not to ask me about anything that I haven't gone over. OK, so tr try to keep let's try to stay on the same page and work as a team. OK, I appreciate that. All right, so the first thing I want to do today is I want to finish the teacher exam. Uh, so if you guys can get out that piece of paper and let's see where we ended up. And if someone could just unmic yourself and let me know what question did I end up on giving the answers to? Can anyone tell me, please? What, what we left them on question three, question nine. I'm no, sorry. No, it was question seven. Wasn't okay. it the pet? Okay. The pet. Let's let's. Or All wait, right. no, it was. Because we did the rapper one. That was the last one. It was we did. nine. It was nine. It was nine. Okay, so I. That's right. I remember now. Um. All right. So you ready to go here with this? Um, how many yes. animals do I have? Four. Nope. Two. Three. Okay. All right. Can you guys see these? Yeah. All right. I have two animals. And this is Remedy. Storm was named after a superhero, uh, the storm. So um, I actually don't even like cats. Um, I'm more of a dog person, but these two cats kind of rule my life now and they act like <laughs> dogs. So one of them even fetches. Uh, so it's it's interesting, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm a new cat person. I, I, um, over, I think they're, well, they're getting older now, they're 13 years old, but um, before that, I, I never knew anything about cats. All right. In what sport do you guys think I was an All-American? Track. Nope. 
badminton. Nope. One more guess. Soccer. Tennis? Oh, baseball. Tennis? Softball. Softball. Yep. Softball. Yep, yep. Uh, let's see here. In high school, what instrument do you think I played? Trumpet. Clarinet. Clarinet. Yep. I, I played the clarinet. Yep, that's right. And I also had 15 years of piano lessons. Okay, next. What do you think my major was in college? If you guessed math, you're incorrect. Anybody science. want to take another guess? Science? Good guess. Nope, not science. Music? Can you guys? Good guess, because I'm a I'm a drama person. I'm a music person. Can you guys see this? Yeah. It's a flash drive. I was a computer science major, so I have my bachelor's of science in computer science. Um, I actually worked for a computer company for five years before I started teaching. Um, I was a subcontractor for the Army, Navy, and Air Force. Uh, I worked on some top secret information. I worked on a project called Star Wars. So um, I did that in San, I moved to San Diego after I graduated from UC Riverside. And um, yeah, so I was working, I worked in industry for a while before I started teaching. All right, this is a crazy question. What color do you think the tile is in my downstairs bathroom? Black. Great. Who said black? Me. Yes, You're sir. Right. And if you see this, it kind of looks like an elephant skin. So it is black. It's just a small little piece of uh, flooring. All right, you ready? Who are my two favorite pop stars? And we'll start with the girl first. So which girl do you think is my favorite pop star? I know there's lots of them. But there's only one that's my favorite. Guess who it is? Beyonce. Katy Perry. Katy Perry. Nope. One more guess. Rihanna. Actually, I love Rihanna, but that's not it. Okay, you ready? Can you guys see this? You guys recognize that girl? No. You don't? No. Lady Gaga. Oh, that's her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so who's who do you think the male pop star is? I saw him in concert last year. I paid a lot of money to see him. Who do you think it is? Ocean Malone. Nope. Khalid? Nope. Jason Derulo. Nope, but I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a hint. It starts with a B. Bad bunny. <laughs> nope. Bruno Mars. All right, you guys are doing a good job. Keep it up. I just want to make a comment right now. Um, for those of you who think I'm just doing this to waste time. Um, I think I mentioned it before, but, um, there's a purpose for everything I do. So when I give you a bunch of problems, there's a reason for it. I, I know you have a life, so I'm not trying to just suck up your life because I don't think you have any other classes. So the problems that I assign, I give you because I feel like that's the appropriate practice for you to understand a concept. And the reason why we're doing this is because I want you to get to know me because I'm a pretty rough teacher. Um, I don't mean to be, but I, some some teachers are afraid of me. Um, I, I, I People kind of describe me as being intimidating, and um, I'm not proud of that at all. Uh, teachers respect that about me, though, because I have great discipline with my students, and I, I don't put up with anything. Like, 
kind of zero tolerance. So I really, this is very important for me, for you to get to know me as a human being before I get into that crazy, crazy teacher mode. So um, the reason why I turn into the crazy teacher is just because I care about my students and I feel very responsible for you. And I don't, the, the, my worst fear is to let you down. So I run a very tight ship. Like I was saying, you know, I don't, in the class, I don't allow gum chewing. I, I don't allow you to eat in class. Um, you have to be in your seat when the bell rings. You have to serve detentions with me. Um, it, it's just a, a really strict type of atmosphere. And students like yourself like that because you like structure. Um, but anyhow, I wanted you to get the opportunity to get to know me. Um, because a lot of my friends don't even know me. And I didn't want to come across as that that strict teacher right away. I, I wanted you to really see who I really am, um, that I can act normal. Um, so that that's why we're doing this, okay? Okay, let's continue on. All right, uh, where do you guys think I earned my master's degree? Okay, ready, can you guys see this? Can you guys see that? Azusa Pacific University. So yesterday I had a student that said she wants to go there. So that was where is that? It's in Azusa. It's out like near West Covina. So the Covina okay. area. Um, but I, I didn't drive out there. I went to a satellite school out here in San Bernardino. So um, that's what I did when I got my master's. All right, you ready? What pattern theme do you think is throughout my whole house? And in that bathroom with the black tile, my wallpaper is this. What do you think it is? Yeah. My pillows are this. My wallpaper is this. What do you think it is? Stripes. Good guess. That's not it, though. Dots. Nope. See that? Cheetah print? <laughs> yep, it's leopard. Uh-huh. Leopard. Oh. <laughs> I'm just like, is it cheetah? <laughs> okay, now this is a this is an easy one to get if you just pay attention to what I look like. So what do you guys think my favorite accessory is? Jewelry. You're right. <laughs> it is but jewelry. So it is jewelry. And um, I do sleep with all this jewelry. I don't put it on every day. It's it's something that's kind of attached to me, like a tattoo. Uh, so I do wear my jewelry all the time. I don't, I don't take it off. Um, all right. Number 18. Okay. You guys ready for this one? Who is my favorite basketball player of all time? Shaq. No, but that's a good guess. No. Jordan. See that? You're right. Who said that? Me. Alexis, no. Me who? Manuel. Oh, good job. Good job, Manuel. All right. Let's see here. Where are we? Where did, okay. Where did I get my math credential? Where do you guys think I got my math credential? So I got my bachelor's at UC Riverside. I got my master's at Azusa Pacific. Where did I get my math credential? Cal State San Bernardino. You guys went silent for a moment. Are you guys okay? Yeah. Okay. All right, what is my religion or faith? Christian. Yep. 21. All right, let's see if you can get this one. Who is my favorite NFL team? 49ers. No. Raiders. Can't stand those guys. Raiders. No, absolutely not. I hate the Raiders. <laughs> you guys, yeah. there's only... You guys, there's only one football team that exists. Who is it? Cowboys. Uh, Chargers. No. no. 
And don't say the Rams either. Rams. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Patriots. Packers? Steelers. Oh. The Steelers. All right. In high school, I was MVP of, of the league in what sport? Volleyball. Badminton. How did you, how did you know volleyball? Oh, never mind. I don't know. I just guess. Was that just was oh. that just a lucky guess? Yeah. Because you're really yeah, tall. I actually played uh, in college. I played. I was recruited for volleyball, um, and I played volleyball, but I also played softball. So softball was always really my sport, um, but I was recruited for volleyball. All right. What are my two favorite Broadway musicals? Hamilton. Say that again. Hamilton. Hamilton. Okay, okay, I got to tell you the story about that. I have not seen Hamilton. Uh, in um, fact, I had movie. tickets. My tickets have been canceled twice. And I finally renewed them for November of not this year, but the next year. So I have tickets for Hamilton, but I have to wait over a year to go and see it. It's on Disney Plus. The, the, the only I musical know. Know is, uh, uh, high school musical. I'm too, I'm too cheap I'm... To, to get the Disney Plus, but that I see it all the time and I wish I had it. All right, here you go. Here's my musicals. Can you guys see these? Uh -huh. I think I've seen Phantom of the Opera about nine times, and I've seen Wicked in New York and um, Los Angeles. So, all right. 24. What is my favorite Major League Baseball team? Angels. No. Dodgers. No, absolutely not. Oh, my God. One more guess. Yankees? No, but I do like Derek Jeter. Uh-uh. No? The Pirates. I like the Pirates. All right, and finally, I gave you a hint that my father didn't go to college. So what do you think my father did for a living? Roofing. Construction. Not construction, not roofing. Plumbing. Nope. Military. He was in the army, um, but he didn't only do that. So he was in the army, uh, but that's not what he did for his uh, career. He, um, my dad actually worked at Kaiser Steel. So you know where the speedway is out in Fontana? There was a big steel mill there called Kaiser Steel. And that's where my dad worked. Yeah. So I know you guys think all these questions are crazy, but I do want to share something with you. Um, my dad did pass away when I was nine. And uh, my, my mother never worked. She just stayed home and raised me and we lived off, you know, my dad's social security. In other words, we really didn't have any money. Uh, so when I was in high school, um, I didn't have a swimsuit. I didn't have a class ring. I didn't get with all my awards. I, I didn't have a letterman's jacket. Um, I had one pair of pants, I think. And, and so I really, I, I felt at the time I had everything um, because my mom was such a good mom for me, but, um, the reason why I'm telling you this stuff is because I don't want you to think I'm some white girl, you know, standing up in front of me that doesn't understand what you're going through. So my life was pretty, pretty rough. Um, and um, I want you to know that I'm one of you. I grew up in Colton. I, I know all about um, a lot of your situations because I went through a lot of it. And I also showed you all my degrees. My bachelor's degree, my master's degree, and my credential to let you know that you can accomplish anything in your life that you want to accomplish. So don't let anyone tell you that you can't or that you don't have enough money or that you live in a 
um, lower income community, it doesn't matter. You can do anything in your life that you want to do. Don't let anyone prevent you from doing what you want to do. And don't let anything stop you from having dreams and reaching for the stars because you can. And I'm living proof of that. So a lot of times students will say, you have a new dress every day. You know, you have, you wear different shoes every single day. Well, that's because I didn't have anything, you know? So now I have two cars of my choice. I have, I own a house, you know, I, I wear, I buy what I want. I don't look at the price of anything a whole lot anymore. Um, so um, you too can have a life that can be different. Um, you know, if you're, I, I know this is a very difficult time, but I want you to know that, um, with the hills come the valleys and you always can go up on the on the hill okay so you just but, but I'll, I'll tell you something else nothing's for free everything comes with a price and you're going to have to work your butt off all right it's going to be a lot of sacrifice it's going to be a lot of blood sweat and tears um but if you want something bad enough and you work hard enough you, you can do it okay all right, so I hope you, you like that little quiz. Um, this right here, did I explain this last time? All right, well, this is in Google Classroom under School of Fish. And now you're going to tell me about yourself. So you're going to put your name or nickname on here. I don't care. You are going to describe yourself in markers, colors, paint, ribbon, stickers, glitter, whatever you want to do. This is for this is a chance for you to be creative. And if you're not creative, there's nothing wrong. You know, you can't go wrong with this. Just do something that tells me about yourself. And then when we get back to school, we're going to cut these out and we're going to put them on the boards. And it looks really cool because people come in my room and go, is this art? And I'm like, no, this is math. Uh, this is math. And the coolest thing about this is sometimes I have students that just don't feel like they're worth a whole lot. And with these, I tell my students, look around the room. Isn't this beautiful? All the fish, the school of fish. I go, what makes this beautiful is you being quirky, you being a geek, you being weird, how, whatever you want to call it, you being unique is what makes life beautiful. And that's, you're gonna see this in the classroom. And I want you to remember that when you see it, it's like, you're gonna think, oh, that's so cool. And um, yeah, all of you are cool. Don't try to be like anybody else. Don't pay attention to the number of likes you have. Just know that you're perfect the way you are. And without you, um, we would be missing that uniqueness in our world. So we need you, you know, we, we need you exactly the way you are. Don't try to be somebody else. We don't need two of somebody. Okay, any questions about this? When you get done with that, you have some time. I'm not putting a deadline on it. Send it to me so I can see it so I can get to know you. So I gave you the opportunity to know me a little bit. Um, send it to me through Google Classroom. And um, let, me, let me get to know you um, in this weird uh, platform here. Okay, right now what I want to do is um, I am not going to go through the whole syllabus today, but I am going to go through some of it. And then we're going to watch a motivational video. And yesterday, my pre-cal class didn't tell me that they couldn't hear the audio. So I'm hoping that you can hear the audio, um, but we'll see how that goes. So let me share my screen. Just bear with me a minute. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Somebody respond, please, because I can't see you right now. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. So if you look at this, this is period four. And this is your meeting times. There's my office hours. If you or your parents or anyone wants to speak with me about something, um, I can set up a Google Meet or a WebEx meeting. Um, you can read all this if you want. You may have already read it. What I want to do is go down to the meeting expectations. 
I know probably a lot of teachers have already gone over this, but I just want to make sure that you know that um, you want to be early uh, to ensure everything is working properly. Do not be late. All right. I'm trying to teach you to be on time because if you're late to your first job, you're going to get fired. So we are practicing real life skills here. So don't be late. It's disrespectful. It's rude. And I don't like it. So make sure you're on time to class. If possible, use AirPods, um, headphones or to, to minimize distractions. I know students were complaining in the spring that there were just too many distractions at the house. They couldn't find a place, you know, for quietness to hear the class meeting. Um, try to find a place um, or get uh, some kind of um, earbuds to uh, silence the distractions around you. Uh, make sure you sit close to the to screen that, so your face fills the screen. You guys are doing really good with that. I really appreciate it. Um, you already know this float across the bottom to mute yourself. You're doing an awesome job with that. Um, don't forget to unmute yourself. Um, I, I might, may have said this, but I wanna repeat it. That mute is not to silence you. Okay, that mute is to silence static. Okay, so the mute is, is intended to silence static. Feel free to talk to me. And you guys are doing an awesome job with this, okay? So just feel free to unmute yourself and make a comment. Like if you see me working a problem and I'm doing it wrong or, or um, let's say I do the video today and um, you can't hear the audio, make sure you speak up and say, Ms. Birch, we can't hear, we can't, we can't hear it. Um, or send me a remind message. You know, um, I might not be able to hear you with the video. So send me a remind saying we can't hear the audio. There's a problem um, so that I'm not wasting your time or mine. Okay. Make sure you participate. You guys are doing good with that by asking questions. Um, be engaged. And uh, if you could just nod your head or give me a thumbs up so I know what's going on. It, it's just the weirdest thing trying to talk to the screen and nobody's here. It's just me and it, it's weird to just be talking to a screen and praying that someone's listening to me. Uh, be prepared to have your materials around just like you would in school. So you, you wanna make sure you have your calculator. You wanna make sure you have your papers. You wanna make sure you have your notebook, which I'll be going over today. You wanna make sure that you have everything around me. I don't want you to have to stand up and go to the, you know, go three doors down in the house, have everything ready to go. Uh, make sure you take notes. Um, I won't tell you that whenever I write on the board, you should write it down. Uh, dress appropriately, refrain from eating during the meeting. Um, you want to try to simulate a real life classroom as much as possible. Try to get in a routine, try to get in a habit every day for class. Um, try to just act like you're actually going to school. Uh, make sure your work area is clean and silence your phone only uh, to check uh, emails and texts and things that pertain to the meeting. So normally I say no cell phones. In fact, I take cell phones away if you have them in class, out in class. But um, with this, like I said, we need to, we might, you might have to send somebody a reminder to ask them about something that's going on with your audio or your video. Um, and so you have to have the phone so we can communicate if something's going wrong. But, but keep it pertaining to the meeting. Okay, you've been asking me about materials. So here they are. You have to have notebook paper. And you must do your notes and assignments in pencil. You can highlight things in pens or highlighters, but you must do your assignments and your notes in pencil. All right. You're going to need a three ring binder. And I'm going to show it to you in a minute. Uh, you could be it could be a five subject notebook. Or it could be a notebook just for math. Now, if you talk to any of my former students, they would say, just get a separate notebook for math. There's just way too much work. There's way too many papers. There's way too much stuff she's giving you. Um, just get a separate notebook for math. Make sure you have a graphing calculator and the colored pens and pencils are for to annotate your notes or your assignments. Okay, I'm gonna show you the notebook in a minute. Uh, and I'm going to go through it. Um, I'm going to set it up for you. Um, but before I do that, I just want to go over the student expectations and teacher expectations while I'm here, and then we're going to stop with the syllabus for today. 
All right, you want to make sure you complete assignments by the due date. If you don't, you'll get a zero. So you cannot just turn in the assignments whenever you want. It causes me a lot of work and I'm not going to deal with it. So if there's some extenuating circumstance, like you were rushed to the hospital in an ambulance or there was some emergency, you're going to have to talk to me, um, but, but I'm not taking any late work. So pay attention to the deadlines. When I give a deadline, make sure you turn it in on time. If you turn it in a minute late, I'm not going to take it. All right, regular, uh, regular communicate with me and other students. Hopefully we're going to be able to work in groups soon. Um, you're going to actively engage in all required discussions. You are going to check Google Classroom frequently and email for announcements. Um, be professional, respectful, be honest and responsible, and be committed, which I know you guys are being honor students. So let's see what my job is. My job is to provide complete and well-organized course materials. I hope I'm going to encourage questions and communication with you. I'm going to maintain workshop. Workshop is when we, you and I meet to go over problems. So it's a real lax atmosphere where you're asking any questions, working problems, basically whatever you want to do um, to get something straightened out. Um, I have office hours. You just need to set something up with me if, if you need to meet with me. Um, here's one thing you need to know. I do not do grades in Zangle. So you will submit your grade, your assignments. You submit your assignments in Zangle, but I record them. I'm sorry, you, 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 let me start over. You submit your assignments in Classroom, but I record them on Zangle. So whatever kind of, whatever kind of grades are coming up in Zangle uh, Classroom, don't pay attention to them. I'm just collecting the assignments in Zangle. I'm keeping the grades on, I'm collecting the assignments in Classroom. I'm keeping the grades on Zangle. So pay attention to your grade on Zangle. That's what I'm trying to say. Pay attention to your grade in Zangle. Okay, be, I'm going to be professional and I'm going to be respectful with you guys also. All right. With that, we're going to stop this for a minute. Um, I do want to show you the, you know what? Let's watch the video first and then I'll show you the notebook and I'll talk about assignments. Okay, so let's watch the video and let's see if we have luck with the video. Now, let's see if this is going to work. I'm going to use a, uh, I'm going to Bluetooth my, one of my speakers and see if I can get this to work. Okay, I want this. You guys can still see my screen, correct? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you ready? Let's try this. I'm going to turn on my speaker and see if you can hear. Can you guys send me a remind? Um, actually, I'm going to pick one person. Alessandra, can you send me a remind message of whether you can see it or not and hear it? Do you mind, Alessandra? Okay, Alessandra, yeah, I'll send me a Thank you. All right, here we go. Mom, you need to leave. It's worthwhile unless you take risks. Nothing. Nelson Mandela said there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Not sure in your experiences in school and applying to college and picking your major and deciding what you want to do with life. I'm sure people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept, having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. Figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. Without consistency, you'll never finish. So do what you feel passionate about, passionate about. Take chances. Don't be afraid to fail. There's an old IQ test with nine dots. And you had to draw five lines with a pencil within these nine dots without lifting the pencil. The only way to do it was to go outside the box. 
Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to fail big, to dream big. But remember, dreams without goals get dreams. Reggie Jackson struck out 2,600 times in his career, the most in the history of baseball. But you don't hear about the strikeouts. People remember the home runs. Fall forward. Edison conducted 1,000 failed experiments. Did you know that? I didn't know that. 1,000 and first was the light bulb. Fall forward. Every failed experiment is one step closer to success. You've got to take risks, and I'm sure you've probably heard that before, but I want to talk to you about why that's so important. You will fail at some point in your life, accept it. You will lose. You will embarrass yourself. You will suck at something. There's no doubt about it. And I know that's probably not a traditional message for a graduation ceremony, but hey, I'm telling you, embrace it because it's inevitable. In the acting business, you fail all the time. Early on in my career, I auditioned for a part in a Broadway musical. For me, I I can sing. I didn't get the job. But here's the thing, I didn't quit. I didn't fall back. I walked out of there to prepare for the next audition and the next audition and the next audition. I prayed. Wait. I continued to fail and fail and fail, but it didn't matter because you know what? There's an old saying, you hang around the barbershop long enough, sooner or later you're going to get a haircut. So you will catch a break, and I did catch a break. Last year, I did a play called Fences on Broadway. But here's the kicker. He was at the court theater. He was at the same theater that I failed that first audition 30 years prior. The point is, every graduate here today has the training and the If you don't fail, you're not even trying. I'll say again, if you don't fail, you're not even trying. To get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. So imagine you're on your deathbed, and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential. The ghost of the ideas you never acted on. The ghost of the talents you didn't use. They're standing around your bed, angry, disappointed, and upset. They say, we, we came to you because you could have brought us to life, they say. And now we have to go to the grave together. So I ask you to, how many goes your time comes? I just got back from South Africa. It's a beautiful country. It's there with terrible poverty and need help. And Africa is just the, the, the tip of the iceberg. The Middle East needs your help. Japan needs your help. Alabama needs your help. Tennessee needs your help. Louisiana needs your help. Philadelphia needs your help. The world needs a lot, and we need it from you. We really do. We need it from you young people. I mean, I'm not speaking for the rest of us up here, but I know I'm getting a little grayer. From you, the young people, because remember this. Get out there. You got to give it everything you got, whether it's your time, 
your 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 talent, your prayers. What are you going to do with what you have? I'm not talking about how much you have. Some of you are business majors. Some of you are theologians, nurses, sociologists. Some of you have money. Some of you have patience. Some of you have kindness. Some of you have love. Some of you have the gift of long suffering, whatever it is, whatever your gift is. What are you going to do with what you have? All right, now here's my last point about failure. Sometimes it's the best way to figure out where you're going. Your life will never be a straight path. I began at Fordham University as a pre-med student. I, I took a course called the Cardiac Morphogenesis. I couldn't read it. I couldn't say it. I sure couldn't pass it. So then I decided to go into free law, then journalism. And with no academic focus, my grades took off in their own direction. I had a 1.8 GPA, and the university politely suggested that it might be better to take some time off. I was 20 years old. I was at my lowest point. And then one day, and I remember the exact day, March 27th, 1975, Beauty shop. My mother owned a beauty shop up in Mount Vernon, and there's, there was this old woman who was uh, considered one of the elders in the town. And I didn't know her personally, but I, I was looking in the mirror, and every time I looked in the mirror, I could see her behind me. She was staring at me. She just kept looking at me. Every time I looked at her, she kept giving me these strange looks. So she finally took the dryer off her head and said, some, "She said something I'll never forget." She said, "Young boy, I have a prophecy." A spiritual prophecy. She said, you are going to travel the world and speak to millions of people. And in the years that followed, just as that woman prophesied, I have traveled the world and I have spoken to millions of people through my movement. Millions who up till this day couldn't see me. I, who, who, up till this day, I couldn't see while I was talking to them. And they couldn't see me, but I didn't see the most. They couldn't see the real me. But I see you today. And I'm encouraged by what I see. And I'm strengthened by what I see. Because taking risk is not just about going for a job. It's also about knowing what you know and what you don't know. It's about being open to people and to ideas. The chances you take, the people you meet, the people you love, the faith that you have, that's what's going to define you. Never be discouraged. Never hold back. Give everything you got. And when you fall throughout life, remember this. Fall forward. Hold on just a second. Sorry about that. Okay. Were you guys able to hear that? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to share that video with you. That was Denzel Washington in a million movies. Um, but our society um, is making us believe failing is bad. And the reason why I'm talking to you guys is because you're used to doing everything perfect, just like me. I was a straight A student. If I got a B plus, I would break out in a sweat and be completely stressed out. Um, so I had to get those A's. I had to be MVP of the league in volleyball. I had to be the best softball. I had to do everything perfectly. Well, guess what? Life doesn't work that way. And uh, I ended up passing out in one of my physics classes at UC Riverside and I was hospitalized. I had an aneurysm that almost killed me. So you have to keep your perspective on things. 
and you are going to fail. And guess what? It's okay. So there will be things that aren't fair in life. You might have a professor in college that doesn't even keep grades and you might pull out a D. I remember getting a D in one of my math classes at UC Riverside. At that point, I was like, you know what? This guy's an idiot. He's not even testing us on what we're doing. And so I'm not even going to take the class over. I'm just going to take the D and guess what? I'm going to still do whatever I want in my life. So you're going to have fair teachers like myself. You're going to have teachers that just really don't care about you. Um, they don't really care, you know, about their job. Um, so I want you to know that this class is going to be rough. It may be the first time you've ever been challenged in math. Okay, but I don't want you to be afraid of getting a problem wrong. I don't want you to be afraid of failing because guess what? We're successful through our failures. Crazy statement, huh? It's like we have to fail to succeed. Michael Jordan, you know, one of my, my favorite basketball player of all time. There's a really cool poster that says, I missed umpteen thousand free throws. I missed umpteen hundred game winning shots. And at the bottom of the poster, it says, and that's why I'm successful. So we want to get away from what society's saying and society saying failure is bad. You don't want to be perfect. You know, you got to be perfect. Make sure you, you, you do everything perfect. No. You're going to fail to succeed. You have to have those failures. Okay. So anyhow, that's my motivational talk for today. It's a very important talk. And I hope you enjoyed that video. All right. I did want to show you the notebook. This is Storm's notebook. This is Storm. Of course, he puts his picture really big on the front so he can see himself because he's happy when he sees himself. He has pictures of his friend. There's Storm and Remedy. This is um, his friend Banshee. And uh, so your notebook is in Google Classroom, the title page. Um, you do have to fill it out on the bottom. So name, date, period, and Miss Birch. Um, you notice that it's decorated. So when I show you the specifications for the notebook, you do get credit for decorating your notebook. So when I open this up, when you see the dividers, they're all going to be decorated. So you're like, well, why, why is she making us do this? Why, why is she having us do all this art stuff? Um, here's the reason. There are going to be times when you hate my guts. And there's going to be times when you wonder, hey, I thought I liked math. And now all of a sudden you hate math. Because it's going to be the first time you've ever been challenged in math. I want you to open up your notebook and I want you to have happy feelings about math. So whether it be pictures of your girlfriend, pictures of your boyfriend, pictures of your family, pictures of your animals, pictures of your hobby. Um, I want you to decorate your notebook so that when you hate my guts and you hate math, you feel good when you pick up your notebook with all the things that you love. All right, let me show you the inside. The inside has a, an assignment sheet, which is required. So you must, re, you must um, log your assignments. And then there's three section dividers. So the first one is notes and see Storm put pictures of his friends. The second one is assignment Cinderella. See his pictures of her in there. And then when he looks out the window, he likes to look at the butterflies and there he is. So you can decorate this however you want. In, the, in my handouts here, he has a multiplication table. And now what I would like to do is I would like to go through uh, specific things about the notebook. So I'm gonna share my screen with you again. And these pages are in Google Classroom. It's titled Assignments and Notebooks, I think, or Notebooks and Assignments, one or the other. Let me see if I can find it here, bear with me. Could you guys see me okay? Could you guys see that notebook okay? You guys, could you see that notebook I just showed you okay? Yeah, okay. I was sharing my screen and I didn't mean to. So now I want to share my screen again. Uh, 
All right, get out of here. Get out of the way, please. I... That's not what I want. Uh -huh. Thanks for being patient. So I want classroom. This is what my Google Classroom looks like with all my classes. So I'm going to go in period four. Classwork. So I don't know what your Google Classroom looks like, but this is what mine looks like. And uh, this is what I want to look at assignments and notebooks. All right, I'm almost there. Thanks to your patience. All right, so we're not going to look at assignments right now. We're going to look at notebooks. Now, going back to what I was saying, and can somebody please respond to me? Could you guys see that notebook okay? Because I, I wasn't meaning to share my screen like that. Could, could you see the notebook that I was illustrating? Or do I need to show it again? The one with the cat? Yeah. Yeah, I could see it. Okay, okay. I could see it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so the notebook, you're going to keep a math notebook with all of your notes, graded assignments, and handouts. Um, it'll be checked randomly, and um, the notebook is going to, it's so important to me because I feel like you need the notebook to be organized, and it will correlate to your success in this class. It will count as an exam grade. All right, so if you want to write this stuff down and then put it in um, Cami and annotate it or whatever, this is still in the blanks. So I'm going to go through this. Um, if you want to write it in on this document, go ahead. Otherwise, just number it and put it in later. OK, you ready? Number one, your notebook must be a three ring binder. Type. So it must be a three ring binder type. I'm breaking down the notebook now. Um, it should have a title page. Yours is different than mine, but it is in Google Classroom. It should have an assignment sheet. And it should have three section dividers. The first divider should say notes, however you want to write it. The second one should say assignments. And the third one should be handouts. Just to reiterate, number three, there must be a title page. Number four, there must be an assignment sheet. I put these in Google Classroom. Number five, there must be, there's dividers. Dividers must separate each section. Number six is just reiterating notes, assignments, and handouts. Number seven, the material must be arranged in chronological order. If you need the spelling, it's C-H-R-O-N-O-L-O-G-I-C-A-L, I think, chronological order. That just means put it in order by date. Keep your notebook early, neatness and creativity, coloring it up is worth 10% of the grade. And this is what the grade looks like. So basically, think of it this way. You get a point for everything. For notes, you get three points, and it adds up to 10 points or 100%. Okay, does anyone need any of these repeated? Can you do um, two, three, and four again? Sure. Okay, number two, this should be notes, assignments, and handouts. Number three is there must be a title page. Number four is there must be an assignment sheet. And all of those items, the title page and the assignment sheet are in Google Classroom. And I gave you access to print them or whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to be that exact title page, but you do have to have some type of title page. So if you don't have a printer, don't stress about it. Just make your own. Okay, you don't, you don't need a printer for this. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. All right, 
Anybody want else need to, any of these repeated before I stop sharing my screen? Okay. When I'm in class, usually I tell my students that they cannot get a three ring binder, I will buy one for them. So here's what I'm telling you. If you cannot get a three ring binder, I will take one to your house. You have to have a three ring binder, all right? And you must keep this notebook because we're gonna be taking things in and out and I want you to be able to reference things quickly. All right, so you do need a three ring binder. Okay, any questions about the notebook? Okay, what I wanna do now is talk about the assignments because you have to do them a certain way. So here you go, here's a piece of paper. What you do is you fold it like a hot dog. And on the top of the paper, you put your name, date, period, assignment number. Do not put it in the middle. Do not put it on the bottom and don't put it on the back. So I'll show you again. Here's the paper. When you fold it, name, date, period, assignment number. When you do the assignment, this is page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six. You might have a, you might have a million pages. You have to fold it and put your name, date, period, assignment number on the front. When you open it up, it should be problem number one. So if you have multiple pages, when I open it up, I wanna see problem number one. All right, you are to write the original. I'm gonna go over all this again. I'm just showing you a visual, but I will be going over this. Number one, you're gonna write the problem and work vertically and circle your answer. At the end of the assignment, so let's say I assign 100 problems. At the end, you're going to draw a line and write the word corrections. You're going to write the word corrections and you're going to fix your mistakes. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because you're going to have the answers to everything. So I'm either going to say the answers or I'm going to give you the answers. And what you don't want to do is grade it inside your assignment because you're going to forget what you messed up on when it comes for the exam. So by writing the word corrections and fixing your work, it, it's a red flag to you saying, oh, I missed this. I missed this. I got to make sure I know this for the exam. So that's why I'm encouraging, encouraging you to make corrections after we go over it. OK, now let me just show you a problem on the whiteboard here. So let's say that you were doing an assignment. Here's problem number one. So you're gonna write the original problem and you would solve for Y. So you would subtract three X from both sides. I'm sorry, two X. You would get 3y is equal to a positive negative, depends on the bigger number, positive and opposite subtract. And then you would divide by three. So this is a linear function. And then you would circle your answer. Now, I really hope your teachers have trained you how to do this, but this is how you need to do your work. If you don't do it, I won't accept it. So you have to write the original problem. You must work vertically and you must circle your answers. All right, let me share my screen with you again and we will look in depth at the assignment. Oh, I was already on it. Ah. There. 
Okay, here we go. The assignments are gonna be given often in class. It's important to complete all assignments. Failure to do so will affect your grade severely. Late assignments will not be accepted. Uh, there are exceptions for extenuating circumstances, but that has to be discussed with me. Um, so here we go, number one. Assignments are to be done in pencil only. Now, like I said, if, if you can annotate this with Cami, um, that's cool. If, if, you're, if you can't do that, um, just write it on a sheet of paper so that you have it, the blanks. Assignments done in pen will not be accepted. Number two, assignments are to be folded in half like a hot dog. And it should have this information on the top. So A is name, B is date, period, and assignment number. Number three, the original problem must be written down for every problem on every assignment. So that means if I give you some type of, type of worksheet or puzzle, there's no room to show your work, don't, don't. Do it on there, get a separate sheet of paper. Number four, all work showing how the problem was done must be written down. Number five, problems are to be worked vertically. That means up and down. Number six, all answers must be clearly circled. Number seven, corrections are to be done under a line at the end of the assignment. This assignment is only one problem. So draw a line, write the word corrections. And the rest about extra credit, I don't give any extra credit really. So you can read the rest of that, but um, I don't give extra credit in lieu of an assignment. Once you miss an assignment, it's gone forever. All right, does anybody need me to repeat any of those points? Yeah, could you repeat eight again? Sorry. Can, can you say that again, number what, eight? Eight. Yeah, indicate corrections by writing the word corrections underneath the line. Can you also do um, three? Sure. The original problem must be written down for every problem on every assignment. The original Thank problem you. must be written down for every problem, yeah. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Can you repeat two? Yep. Number two, A is name, date, period, assignment number. And this is what it looks like. Open it up and do problem number one. But the paper looks like this. And when you put these in your notebook, you would open it up. So in your notebook, they're all in order. One, two, three, four, five, and you're just shuffling them through your notebook like that. Okay, last call. Anybody need anything repeated? All right, you guys ready to do a problem? Okay, I can't see some of your faces. I need to see your faces, please, or I'm gonna think you're off playing Xbox. So please show your little faces. Thank you. Show me your face, please. Let's do a problem. All right, you ready for this? Period three, nobody got this right. So that's why I gave you the motivational video. Everybody failed it. So nobody got this right yesterday. All right, so let's see how you do. So you're gonna do this problem on a sheet of paper. Ready? All right, what did I do? It's amazing how I can just be here my rag disappears. Hold on. I'm used to having seven or eight whiteboards, so this is confining me, this little area. Go to bed this time. Yeah. 
way to fold the paper like that. This is not a part of the assignment. This is just write this in your notes. So in your notes, what I would do is I would put today's date and put Friday. And then whenever I talk or write things down, write them down on your notes. And you'll keep them in your notebook under the notebook section. For those of you who have a spiral notebook, you can do your notes in your spiral notebook, but it has to be in the three ring binder. So if you want to take your notes in a spiral notebook, that's fine, but it has to be in the rings in the three ring binder. All right, there you go. Uh, when you're done, I want you to shout out your answers. There's gonna be a bunch of different answers, so shout them out. You guys do see me big right on your screen. You don't see me as a little thumbnail, right? Hello? Yeah. You see me big, right? Okay. When you get an answer, just shout them out. I want to, everybody has to participate. So I'm not taking volunteers right now. I want everybody's answer. So just start shouting them out. As soon as you get your answer, I want to hear from everybody, please. Remember, we don't care if you get it wrong. We don't care if you fail. So just let me know what you get. I got 66. Okay, thank you. I'm ha I'm passing out a million dollars for whoever gets this right. <laughs> I wish, I wish I had a million dollars. Let me hear you guys, please. Shout them out. Dun 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 Babe, 134? 104. Okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're running out of time. Hurry. I got 37. Thank you. Let's go. Still waiting for some. What? Thank you. I got 30. Thank you. I got 25. 25. Thank you. I got 37. Okay, we got that up there. Thank you. I got 23. 23, thanks. Wait, no, okay, I wrote the problem, I didn't my answer. Say it again. Okay, one more minute. I got 107. 
107, thank you. Okay, 37, yeah, I wrote the question wrong. I put a time uh -huh. instead of a divide. Okay, last call. Does anybody want to give your answer before we get going here? Okay, well, a while back, see, one of the advantages of you having a teacher that's taught for 30 years, I know what you're going to do before you do it. So I'm like a psychic. I know what you're going to mess up on before you do it because I've been teaching for 30 years. So this one time I was wondering, why are my students getting all the wrong answers? What is going on here? And guess what I figured out? I figured out that everybody can say the order of operations, but they actually don't know how to do it. So you guys know the order of operations, right? You've had it for a million years. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, right? Well, guess what? Some that you multiply divide and you don't. It's multiply or divide, whichever comes first from left to right. The second thing is, is adding and subtracting is the same thing in algebra. Because seven plus a negative three is the same as seven minus three. It's the same thing. The order doesn't matter. So I'm sorry that that blows your mind, but the order doesn't matter for adding and subtracting. Okay. All right. The other thing is this. Some students, especially honor students, think they can do this in their head. You can't do it in your head. Even if you are Albert Einstein, you can't do this in your head because your brain can't hold this much information. So you always want to show your work because your brain is not going to hold everything. So it's physically incapable of doing it. So you can't do it. I don't care how hard you try. So we're going to do this problem together. So stay with me here. Uh, this is, we are simplifying an algebraic expression. So this is not an equation. This is an expression. We're going to simplify it. I'm going to two minus three depends. It's negative one. This is seven plus four. All right, I'm still working on parentheses. This is not parentheses, by the way. This is exponents. And since the parentheses are over there, I can do I can do exponents if I want. So this would be five minus two. A negative raised to an odd power is negative. So this ends up being negative one. Negative one times negative one times negative one. Plus eight plus four divided by two times eleven. So we don't have any more exponents. We're going to multiply and divide from left to right. So this would be a negative times a negative is a positive. This four divided by two is two. That ends up being two times. So we get five plus two plus eight plus 22. And this we can just add up. That's 37. Okay, now, some people think you could have different answers, but there's only one answer. So there's only going to be one answer in a lot of the things that you do. Okay, so, um, yeah, there's one answer, and this is how you would do it. So I got to get, I got to convince you, and I got to get you not to skip steps. I need to get you to follow the order of operations and truly understand it. And I need you to be able to let a problem filter out to get the right answer every time, not just some of the time. So I just wanted to make a point here. You guys are highly intelligent. You're honor students. And we had a lot of people. I think there was only two people that got it right. And um, that's okay though, because we just need to get it straightened out and move on, right? We get straightened out and move on. You can get started on this. Um, let me stop this for a second. I have not assigned this yet, but you can get started on it. There's no room to show work here. You have to get a separate sheet of paper. What I want you to do is I want you to practice how I want the assignments. You're going to write the original problem. You're going to write vertically and you're going to circle, circle your answer and follow the order of operations. 
If you have more than one page, name, date, period, assignment number, open it up. Let me see problem number one. You can include this page with your assignment since it's part of the assignment, but I have not assigned this yet. But if I were you, I'd get started on it because I'm gonna be assigning it very soon. All right, does anybody have any questions about what I did here on the board? All right, I'm gonna sum it up right now. Uh, class ends at 1045. Do you guys have any questions about the notebook or assignments or the syllabus? All right, I'm gonna turn my recorder off. Um, I hope you guys have a great weekend and um, it was a pleasure seeing you today. Um, if you wanna hang out and ask me some questions, feel free to do that, but I'm gonna turn my recording off. Um, for those of you who wanna watch the recording on YouTube, um, it does take a while to upload it, but I will have it uploaded at least, you know, this weekend. So um, I can't just upload it in two seconds. It takes hours to upload it because I have to, I have to, it has to generate the video, WebEx, and then it has to be uploaded to YouTube and, and, and put together that way. All right, I'm going to turn this off. You guys have a great weekend. You can hang out if you want. Just turn this video off real quick.